Hi guys, it's Jamie Hodgson here and this is The Final Whistle. Hello and welcome to the first new concept of Rugby Connection presents The Final Whistle. Why is it called The Final Whistle? Players get interviewed after The Final Whistle. Our first guest on the new setup, Edinburgh's second row, new cap for Scotland, Jamie Hodgson. Jamie, welcome to the show. How are we getting on? Good, thanks. Thanks very much for having me on. I'm excited to chat to you guys and have a bit of crack. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. And before we proper get into it, massive congratulations on the big win against Saracens at the weekend. Like, we're absolutely buzzing for that. Yes, we're very, very happy with that one. <laughs> Cheers. No, it was, uh, it was a great win. It was good to get down there with the boys. And um, obviously, Saracens with their reputation, European winners, countless times, stuff like that. And they came out with a pretty full strength team. So uh, to go down there and get a result like that was pretty special. And then, um, but I think we deserved it. And I was actually watching a bit of the footage back this morning and um, I think our defence and physicality throughout the whole game was absolutely immense. So um, I think we deserved it, even though it was a bit of a squeaky bum finish at the end, but um, I think we deserved it. And it was just just credit to what we're doing at the minute, getting a massive win on the road like that was, was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree with you. I would say I've never seen the Edinburgh defence like that solid for like that long in a game and it was great to see and hard work definitely pays off um, we've got a first question for you it's just one we ask all our guests what actually got you into rugby? Uh, probably would have just been the fact that a lot of my friends at the time were playing rugby um, I think it was one of my dad's friend's sons was, was going along and so we went to our local rugby club which was Livingston at the time and we all just played minis down there and it was just the enjoyment of it being along there with your friends running about on Sunday and stuff like that so um, that probably got me first in, first into rugby, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Always better playing with your mates than exactly. instead of being on I don't have that luxury. It's just like me and one friend that always played rugby the rest of all football. So like, oh, yeah. That's fun. So, I mean, you got a question for Jamie? Um, well, as the resident, resident referee of the show, um, one question I have is, I, second row I always find is an old position to referee just because you're everywhere and you're doing everything is that and especially like things like charge downs and stuff and we see that get pinged offside or not offside and it's really close is there things you feel referees could do more for second rows like in particular like charge downs and stuff which would help them not concede penalties and keep a more disciplined overall game yeah I think it's a good point actually it's something maybe not thought about but there's probably a lot of like small individual skills that refs like can look for in second rows, especially I think like when it comes to the line out, just with competition in the air, there's a lot of teams that get thrown across at the minute and um so that's there's a big competition there. So I think some refs referee that differently as well. Uh, and then obviously when it comes to yeah guys charging down, I think most most people are pretty good on it. Um off side line is pretty clear when it comes to situations like that. So I think most of the stuff like that is pretty um pretty obvious and, and it gets it gets refereed pretty well, I think. Oh perfect, thank you. There you go. And you're our first second row, so something was fine. I need to get me to get um, Obviously, you've just been capped by Scotland. Massive congratulations for that. Um, you had a successful Autumn Nations. Who was the most welcoming in the Scotland camp when you first arrived? That's actually a very difficult question to answer because like everyone was just so welcoming there. Like I was kind of almost taken aback just by how welcome everyone is. Um, it's like the first thing you get in the door is like everyone's saying hello and it's sort of just like you're you're encouraged to be yourself and around everyone and stuff like that so it's not like you need to go into a corner and hide in a shell which is really, really nice it's really nice to have that environment and everyone being so welcoming so I don't know if I could actually pinpoint it on one person um, but just the whole squad in general was just class and, and really welcoming and, and just awesome to be around That's great to hear I think when I've like seen the boys like at the open sessions, and they all seem very welcome, and they're all happy to talk for 10, 15 minutes, regardless if there's a big queue. They all sit together. It's great. It's proper group. Yeah, which is nice to see. Definitely. So, man, um, a bit more of a funny one because this is more of a chat than an interview. Um, as someone who's new to Edinburgh at uni, uh, as you grew up in the area, favorite favorite nightclub to go to, and reason why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to work at Bourbon for a bit. I used to work behind the bar at Bourbon. I've, so not, been to, I've not done that one yet. I suppose I could be obliged to say that. 
Um, but I, could, I don't know what anymore. I'm starting to get. I'm starting to get old, but probably be Gary's or why not? Oh, aye, okay. Oh, so, there you yeah. go. Why not? That's why not. Amazing. Yeah, well, Murray, you a fan? Are you? Yeah, it's, okay, it's yeah, center. Murray. It's cheap. It's easy to get to. Exactly. No complaint. And it's got the best name. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we've got we've got a fan question for you. It's from our good friend Carwin from Uneducated Rugby. He's asked your dream, current, and all-time second row partner. Uh, I'm gonna go with Paul Connell. Oh, uh, I like that. I've I've watched I've watched him a lot growing up, and he was someone I've always looked up to, just sort of in regards to the way he played the game, and especially his leadership and stuff like that, and the way he spoke. I think was was awesome. Um, so if I was to choose one, probably go for him. Nice. Have you got a bit a current one you'd love to play alongside with? Um. I'll go with Gilco. I'll keep him happy. Oh, oh I'll keep him happy. I'll keep him happy. We, we love, we love Grand Del Cristo. We love him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll be happy with that. I'd like to see that though. Just, just once off for a charity game, Jamie Hodgson with Paul Connell. Why not? Why not? I'll maybe go again. <laughs> Why not? And then you can go there. That's the theme. Why and then you go there that? afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm Are you right? Exactly. Um, our co-host Sean has asked, um, what is your toughest opponent that you've played against? Uh, I think obviously with regards to like the Scotland stuff recently, South Africa were impressive in everything that they do. Uh, I didn't play a huge amount in that game, so I can't comment too much, but they're obviously just a very impressive team and they're, they're bloody good at what they do. Um, in terms of Edinburgh, I think... Your Irish provinces are always really, really strong. You know, you come against a full strength Leinster, a full strength Munster. It's they're a really impressive size. But I think one of the toughest teams we played would maybe be maybe be sail away in Europe last year. We yeah. had a really, really good battle against them. Came out on top, but um they were yeah, they're a good team. Uh, very physical game. So maybe we see them. But then the, the, the Irish provinces are always so good and if uh, that's a tough one actually. That's a tough one. We'll, we'll go for sale or the Irish problems. It's a nice yeah. little mix there. Different um, things. <laughs> sticking on like opponents, this is more your favourite team. So like uh, Dave, the rugby coach, has asked your favourite team to play against both amateur and pro. Ooh. If you don't say Penny Cook, Dave will cry. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Penny man. Amateur. Right. It's a tough one. Uh, at school, being a Stuart boy, I always loved playing against Watson. They were big rivals for us, uh, which is ironic because I then went and played for Watsonians club. Um, so it's probably say when I played for Watsonians, we always had really good games against Herates and Melrose. Um, I'd always really look forward to those two. Um, I'd probably say those two. I'm not very good at selecting one. Sorry, apologies. That's all right. No, that's a good, nice variety. I like it. Uh, no, no, I know no, those that's... leagues are always good. Those school leagues. I mean, I've been involved in a few games and they're always just get people just get up for them, don't they? It's so yeah. big the ra- rivalry of all the schools in Edinburgh. It's class. Yeah, no, I I loved school world rugby. It was really really good fun, and uh, like you said, a lot of boys get up for it. It's good good rivalry amongst all the schools. I think the stat. I mean, I don't know if you've played like other schools from many other places, but I always found like coming from Wales and stuff, the standard of school rugby in Edinburgh is higher than a lot of places I've ever seen, like much higher than most stuff in Wales. I just think it's such a professional aspect from such a young age. I, From what I've seen on the game days, at least, and yeah. what I've heard from a few mates, it's like that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of effort gets put in, stuff like that, and there's a big commitment from the schools in terms of what they, they put resource-wise towards it. So I think, yeah, I think it is a pretty high standard. Um, I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but from from playing in it, I would have said it was pretty high. Aye, aye. Uh, we've got another one from Sean. He's asked, if you're allowed to share, what's the funniest rugby story you've got that you, <laughs> that, that you can share? Because there's some that obviously can get mentioned for legal reasons. <laughs> we all know those ones. Funniest. Christ, that's actually going to think about something. 
Um, we can always come back to that. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get something that will jog the memory come back to something. Yeah, no worries. Um, so when you were coming through the ranks at Edinburgh, you also went and played for, uh, Super 6 at the same time. How did you adapt to going like back and forth to like professional rugby and back to Super 6? I think the whole, it was, at times it was quite challenging in terms of just the training week and stuff like that. I know at the beginning of it, and it has changed a bit now, but we were training pretty much full time with Edinburgh, then going and training at nights with club, then going and play on Saturday. So just in terms of its toll on your body, the training load was pretty, was quite up there. Um, so by the time you got to the weekend on Saturday, it was, you're quite tired, but I know a lot that for a lot of the boys now it's a bit it's changed a bit in terms of that you'll get to miss bits and pieces at Edinburgh if you're playing club, etc. So that's changed. But in general, it was just really good to go and play rugby. I know I think a lot of the young lads now you look at them and unfortunately with all the COVID stuff that's happened, a lot of them hadn't played rugby for a, a really long time. So I think you probably took that for granted in the fact that I was playing regular rugby week in, week out and at a pretty pretty high level as well. So um, you know, it was always good to have that and I think I would have been pretty miserable if I was just going through the ranks holding a pad at Edinburgh and never actually getting to run out on Saturday as well Yeah, that's fair um, Just for some of our viewers because not all of our viewers are from Scotland could you explain what like the Super 6 actually is for those that don't have a clue? Yeah, so uh, effectively it's sort of a semi-professional league that's, that's your next step below professional rugby so we've got the two professional teams uh, being Edinburgh and Glasgow. Uh, and then the Super 6 um, is made up of six teams in Scotland being the Southern Knights, which is the Borders representative, uh, Watsonians, Muir and Harriets, which are from Edinburgh, Stirling and Ayr, Ayrshire Bulls. Um, so everyone plays each other twice, I think. And that's, that's, yeah, that's uh, home and away. Yeah, home and away. So that's Super 6 tournament and then there's playoff games, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. There's a, there's a f- not too much travel, actually, but it's, there's a spread across Scotland of the teams and where they represent. Yeah, it's a nice little group where they've got it as well. Maybe make it like maybe a Super 8 and get like the Highlands involved, maybe? Yeah, I, 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 you always hear rumours getting thrown around about Super 8 or, or whatever, but I suppose the, the more the merrier sort of thing, the more people that can get involved at that level, then the better off that, that we'll be in terms of the, the sort of depth that we've got. Um, yeah. You know, I was talking to a coach, yes, um, we took a coach from Curry under 18 yesterday, um, and we're talking about, he said he they had a team from up from Inverness way, and that pound that club up in Inverness spent £40,000 on travel a year just because they're so far from everyone. Yeah, that's mad. That's mad. No, thanks. That's why I said Fife. It's nice and central. <laughs> or oh, Edinburgh. <laughs> it's even nicer. Edinburgh's nicer, but it's a pain in the arse to walk around. Or drive around, anyway. I was going to say, walk around Edinburgh's lovely. Walking around's nice. I mean, I meant driving around is difficult, <laughs> to say the least. How are you finding it at the, at the Edinburgh's new stadium, at the, at the Down Health? It's been awesome. Like it's been really, really good. So I suppose we'd actually been training it for quite a long time before um, the new season started and everyone got into it. So we already had a feel of what the pitch was like and stuff like that. But then it's just different level and it's full of fans and stuff. And it's I think we were probably quite just scared of the level. We didn't know what was going to happen. And then that first game, the pre-season games, when it was when everyone was in there, and I think that Scarlet's game as well at home, uh, when it was really full, was oh, it was class. And it's just a different different level compared to to playing that. Obviously, Murrayfield's an incredible venue, incredible pitch, and incredible stadium. But to have our own fans in our own stadium, it was just it was amazing to have that, and it, it meant a lot to the players and. Uh, it helped us a lot in big moments in the game as well, just to have the, the fans back in. Um, so it was yeah, great. absolutely. I think, I mean, I've been to the Edinburgh games where it's like three and a half thousand at Murrayfield and there's just no noise because Murrayfield's so big, but then you move it to, I think it's just under 8,000, I think, the damn health holds. Yeah, I think it's seven and a bit or something like that. So yeah, so, yeah just under so you can get 6,000 in that, even if it's not selling, it's a lot louder and a lot more Rowdy, in a way. Yeah, definitely. 
definitely. So, I mean, you've had experience in the Down Health as well. Yeah, well, I was there on the day it opened, but I've not been for a game yet. But I'm going to the Cardiff Blues games to where I'm from, Cardiff. Um, this time, but I'm still supporting Edinburgh. <laughs> I never, I never well, supported the Blues, anyways. Do you know on that someone was, someone kind of said to me, one of my mates from Cardiff, like, "What's the new stadium like?" And I went, "It's a lot like Arms Park, like the 4G and that, like quite the how the stands are. It's a lot like." And I refed on Arms Park a few times. So I was like, "Yeah, it's a lot like that." I don't know if you have played there. If you get the same, yeah, no, I have played at Cardiff Arms quite a bit. Um, I quite like Cardiff Arms. It's a really cool stadium, actually. I quite like it. I love it. The referee changing rooms are flooded, but apart from that, I love the Arms Park. <laughs> That's cool. Um, what's your favourite venue to play at, Jamie? Oh, there's another really good question. Um, Go on, man. <laughs> be like, I think after playing in Auto International, BT Murray Field with full, with full noise was just like so special. So I think that would definitely be my top choice. Yeah, um, that is a good choice. Yeah, um, like a away venue. Um, I quite like the RDS, Leinster. I think that's quite a cool pitch. All right. Um, I've, ne- I've never been to the RDS, but it, it always seems jam packed and yeah. almost like a like a cathedral or a coliseum. Like you don't expect to win when you're there, regardless yeah. of what team you yeah. are. It's very mm-hmm. intimidating. Yeah, definitely. Um, your first game for Scotland against Tonga was also very special for the podcast. It was the first time we all actually met in person. Cause, apart from us. Apart from me and Simeon, because Simeon moved to Edinburgh. But Sean, who couldn't be with us today, lives in the Republic of Ireland. And Harvey, that helps us out here and there, is from Kent. So, so you all met up for the first time there. We all met yeah, up for the first we stayed in my, and I mean we flat, very, very small flat. That's <laughs> right here. Two were on the bed and one was sleeping by the door in a duvet. It was a, it was an experience and a half. And then the next day they all got very drunk. Well, Sean did, and Sean Sean's responsible. I was going to say Sean was responsible. We all got drunk. Well, the wee English fella tried to outdrink the Scots and the Welsh and failed. Standard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, is there any? aims you'd love to achieve either this season or just in your career in general? Um, obviously just I'd love to get more caps for Scotland um, I think I'd love to be involved in a Six Nations tournament um, it's obviously be a massive dream um, and just keep racking up caps for Edinburgh and I think the, the next stage for where we are at the minute is trying to find some silverware there so um, <laughs> I think to do that would be would be awesome. So, yeah, more caps, more silverware. That'd be special. Happy yeah, was, absolutely. Because I've I've been an Edinburgh fan like all my life, and I say it like I've been there for the shit times. I've been there for the good times, and we're just kind of constantly on the rise. And oh, it's just so good to see it. It's not getting old anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not getting old. Fine, high. Exactly. So, uh, no. Hopefully, more more good things to come. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Anyway, so I mean, you got any? I think I'm all good. Thanks. I'm grand. Yeah, I'm good. Um, got a question from Sean. Sean's kind of asked, um, "Is there any advice you'd give your younger self?" Um, probably just just in keep enjoying what I'm doing and. Just learning. I think I, I did. I, I did learn a lot when I was young in terms of I asked loads of questions and um, so just tried to constantly be developing myself. And um, but just enjoying it at the same time as well, and not being too hard on yourself would probably be one. So enjoy what you what you're doing, enjoy the experience and where you are at that at that moment in time. Yeah, great advice. If, I mean, if you're not enjoying it, then there's no point yeah. doing it really. Um. Just back to that, uh, you got that funny story that you could share. Um, I'm really struggling here. <laughs> I think. Just rattle, just rattle through the Edinburgh spot and just say something funny about them if I could. <laughs> um, I think. 
might actually be a fun challenge if we could do that. Just start yeah. dropping the names in the Edinburgh camp and then you just tell me something unique or funny about them. Yeah, okay, we can do that. We'll, do it. So, well, we'll just start with Pierre Schumann. Uh, mad. <laughs> mad. No, uh, shoes. Uh, such a lovely book, but oh, there's, there's that. So there's one. There's one. <laughs> so, uh, Shuey got put in charge of the Edinburgh Christmas one year, um, and I think the boys just said to him, "Listen, Shuey, you can organise sort of maybe we'll have a wee Christmas dinner at lunch and." Uh, before we go out to train in the afternoon and you can maybe do sort of like a wee carol or Christmas carol or something like that. And so this, I think this was Shui's first or second year at the club. And he's like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And uh, so we've got all the young boys together in the toilets um, of like where we eat and stuff like that at, at Murrayfield. And uh, he suddenly pulled out this bag of like masks and it was like King John Un masks and then it was like the, like Grinch masks like literally just a, like any weird ma- mask you can think of before yeah. masks were cool yeah like Superman masks and then sort of like hula skirts and stuff like that so all the young boys put these on and he'd written poems for us all to like to to say and like shoes in fairness shoes English is pretty good compared to some other boys but Writing poems is not his forte. <laughs> <laughs> That's class. He's, he's, he's not quite Shakespeare. We all came out in these weird masks, um, with the po- and started saying these Christmas poems that didn't make a lot of sense, and the whole of the end of staff and management were there going, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> class. So. That is now commonly known as Shuey's Weird Christmas. Uh, and it's actually been requested to come back again this year. By the way, we're getting to go ahead. Film it. I want to see this. Film. I want to see Shuey's Weird Christmas. Oh, anyway, Shuey's Weird Christmas. There you go. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> we, love, we love Shuey, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's an amazing bloke and an amazing player. And you won't meet a, a nicer guy. Um, so we're very, very lucky to have him at the club. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we could still we could still do the description in one word, just rattle through. I some... think I need to ask this one on behalf of one of my flatmates who's obsessed with Blair Kinghorn. Oh, Blair God. Kinghorn. Oh, oh, right. Okay, one for Blair. Yeah. yeah. Um, there'd be too many for Blair. <laughs> too many for Blair. Uh, Blair's a funny guy, and he does funny things a lot of the time. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think. He doesn't have a shoey weird Christmas story, I don't think. Um, not yet, not yet. First time, not yet. First time this year. If it was, if it was, if we were putting in charge of Christmas, there'd probably be a lot of techno DJ music involved. Um, <laughs> Uh, oh, didn't he DJ at like a club in Edinburgh or something like a couple of weeks ago? I swear I saw something about that. Uh, I have no idea. No, idea. he does. He does DJs loads of tight, uh, loads in his his house back home and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think he's been in any clubs or something like that. But he does tons of stuff at home. He's, he's quite good actually. Quite good. Oh, fair enough. There you go. You could have Josh Navidi and Blair King on on the deck. Because <laughs> yeah. apparently Josh Navidi's a big. DJ yeah, as well. Yeah, so. yeah, I've seen that as well. Yeah, there's quite, I think there's quite a lot of players that do it now. I know, like James Haskell and stuff. Oh, yeah, James Haskell. Oh, my God. Yes. Let's all go to Why Not with James Haskell on the decks. Why not? And we'll James Haskell. Weird, weird weird oh. If you combine the two, it could be the DJ event with Shuey's Weird Christmas. That would be pretty special, I think. I'd, I'd pay money for that. Yeah. I would that. pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> Uh, that's brilliant. Who's how have you found the arrival of Emiliano Buffelli? Oh, King oh. Boff. So everyone calls him King Boff. Uh, he's class, isn't he? He's he's yeah, really he's, he's something uh, special. He doesn't speak a word of English, but he's class. Does he? How how does that work communication wise with calls and things? Uh, so I've not had to experience it too much. So I'm not in the back line, but uh, I know that. Um, that he's, I think he, I think he gets gets by a little bit, 
and uh, Ramiro Moyano, I think translates a lot for him. Um, uh, so that's that's a new one for us is sort of like in team meetings you suddenly just hear like Spanish in the background um, of him obviously translating what's been said in the meetings and stuff like that. But uh, no, he's actually considering. I think he's been here what two three weeks. He's already picked up quite a lot, like a, a lot of things, and I'm sure he'll, he'll be fluent by the end of the year. That's That's good. Good. Do you know any Spanish? An Argentinian with um, Scottish slang. That is something I want to see. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was it was funny, those two in the weekend, just constantly in the backfield, just Mark, Mark, the whole thing. So, uh, no, they were class, actually. But um, they're both really, really good lads. And, um, yeah, I'm sure both will be fluent in English by the end of the year. Brilliant. Yeah, he's just, yeah, it's just a, like a once, a, night, a lifetime talent and he just does stuff that yeah, no, it seems unnatural how he does it but just carry on go for it why not I think it's, it's kicking's one as well we were watching it on the bench the weekend and uh, we were just watching him slot these kicks from miles deep but the, they are not the prettiest kicks that you will see um, but they go through the post so that's all that matters that's all, that's all that matters Did you speak any Spanish? Yeah, no not a word I could Not probably water and that's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. That's brilliant. Um, that's basically all, that's all the questions we've got, but I'll, I can talk about all the Edinburgh boys and your experiences all day. <laughs> it's been great. And Simeon's happy that he, he has a resident nightclub to go to now. So. I know. I, I'm going, I'm going to make it a priority before I go back to Wales this week to go to Why Not on behalf of Jamie. <laughs> good, good. Or go, or go to the barbons and say that you know him, and they might get in. Just <laughs> could do, could do. Might not work, but try <laughs> it. If if it doesn't work, why not? So yeah. if neither, you just end up in Gary's. Yeah, or <laughs> yeah. attic. It tends to be attic for me. Class. I mean, this has, this has been an absolute blast, Jamie. Thank you for taking the time to come and speak to us and just ramble on and just go for it. Why not? It's been, it's been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, guys. It's been been really good fun. As, as definitely. You are honestly welcome back anytime. Enjoy your rest week. Um, hope you have a great Christmas. And this has been Rugby Connections Final Whistle with Jamie Hodgson. We'll see you next time. Deal.